So, welcome again uh, in my course power electronics application to power system. So, in the last lecture uh, or in fact in the last couple of lectures I discuss a numerical problem in which I discuss uh, how a midpoint compensation can improve the voltage profile of a symmetrical long transmission line. right? So, uh, also we have seen that when we have a uh, midpoint compensation for a symmetrical lossless long transmission line, there is a change of active power flow through the line. In general for any lossless transmission line, you have seen that the power flow uh, expression for each and every point of the line will remain same because there is no power loss. So, power flow remains uh, constant. Uh, in each and every point of the line. The line might be 1000 kilometer long, but the power flow through each and every point of the line will remain same for a lossless transmission line. However, if there is a midpoint compensation, uh, then the power flow expression will get change. So, these things we have seen from the numerical problem I discussed in my couple of last lectures. Right. Now, in this particular lecture, I will see or uh, you will see that uh, the how a midpoint compensation effects on the power flow of a transmission line. So, let us begin with that. So, so, this expression the topic would be the effect of meet point compensation on power flow so this is the topic which i am going to discuss today this is a in general uh, discussion. I, I will show you how a midpoint compensation effect on the power flow uh, capacity or power flow uh, amount of a transmission line. So, here our assumptions are to discuss this, our assumptions are. We will consider a short transmission line model for simplicity. Then we will consider a symmetrical transmission line and we will also consider the transmission line to be lossless. Okay. So, these are our, these are the our assumptions. So, we will consider the transmission line to be lossless, we will consider it is a short transmission line model and we will also consider the line to be symmetrical. Now, we know there are two types of there could be two types of two types of midpoint compensation midpoint compensation number 1 shunt compensation or if i put number 1 as series compensation then number 2 would be shunt compensation. Okay. So, these are typically two different types of compensation and in general uh, in, in future lecture also whatever power electronic compensator I will discuss uh, they will either belong to series compensation or shunt compensation. Okay. So, here in this particular lecture, I will simply 
uh, use both the type of compensation separately and then find out the expression of the uh, change of uh, active power flow through this unit compensation that we are providing at the midpoint. Okay. So, let us begin with series compensation. Let us be begin with series compensation at midpoint. Now, uh, for this time being you understand that this midpoint means midpoint of a uh, typical transmission line. Okay. So, now if we represent this uh, a short line, uh, then its its representation is something like that we have a line reactance like this. Okay. Since we consider the line to be lossless, so only series parameter that we will have is the line reactance. Now, if we consider the whole uh, line is having reactance as x, then x by 2, x by 2 uh, would be the reactance up to this midpoint. So, x represents line reactance. Okay. Now, let us consider that this sending and side voltage is V at an angle delta and receiving and side voltage is V at an angle 0. Here is our midpoint. So, this is midpoint and the voltage at this midpoint is V m at an angle delta by 2. Now, since the line is symmetrical, so you have understood that for symmetrical line, the magnitude of the sending and voltage and the magnitude of the receiving and voltage are equal. So, that is why I consider both are same, right? but uh, this midpoint voltage would be something different that is uh, uh, V m. So, here V m is basically the midpoint voltage and delta is your load angle. Okay. Now, we know the, the, the expression of the midpoint voltage for a symmetrical lossless long transmission line. Okay. So, uh, we already derived the expression of midpoint voltage magnitude for a symmetrical lossless long transmission line couple of lectures back and uh, if you remember the expression, this expression is something like that V m is equal to V cos delta by 2 divided by cos beta L by 2. This is the expression of midpoint voltage, midpoint voltage for symmetrical lossless long transmission line. Okay. Now, from this expression can we derive the expression of uh, this midpoint voltage for uh, symmetrical lossless short transmission mode line? Yes, we can. So, for short line, for short line, we know that this we can consider that beta L is very near to 0. So, therefore, cos beta L by 2 is close to 1. So, from that we can find out this V m is equal to V cos delta by 2. This we can verify also from this uh, uh, from the phasor diagram as well. Okay. This we can verify from the phasor diagram as well. Now, if we need to draw the phasor diagram for this uh, circuit, then this phasor diagram will be something like that. Here we have this voltage this voltage V at an angle 0 and here we have this voltage at the sending end side which is V at an angle delta. So, this is the angle delta. Okay. All right. So, the difference of this uh, these two voltages one is the voltage at the sending end 
another is voltage at the receiving end is the voltage drop that is happening through the line. Okay. So, that is the voltage drop happening through the line. Now, what we consider that we will consider there is a midpoint compensator somewhere here. So, this represents this represents a midpoint compensator. So, this represents a com series compensator series compensator at midpoint. Now, normally what the a series compensator does is a series compensator changes the reactance of the line. Okay. So, therefore, it impacts the uh, current flowing through this line, okay. thereby it imp also impacts the power flow. Now, how do we find out this current? So, from this uh, expression of this midpoint voltage, we can find out the midpoint current also. Now, to do that, so midpoint power flow power flow expression is P m is equal to V m multiplied by I m and then and since you know that the line is lossless. So, the this midpoint power flow is same as the active power flow uh, from the sending end and the active power flow near to the receiving end. Okay. So, this expression is as you know this is equal to V square this V multiplied by this V that is V square divided by whole like uh, reactance that is x multiplied by sin delta. Okay. So, this is what the power flow of the uncompensated line and this will be also power uh, flow uh, expression at the midpoint. Okay. So, therefore, this uh, midpoint current. So, here I, I should write that V m is the midpoint voltage, I m is midpoint current. Okay. Now, from this expression we can find out this midpoint current is equal to V, V square divided by x sin delta. You know that the phase difference from the uh, your uh, sending end to the receiving end is delta. So, that is why it is delta. So, this uh, divided by V m. So, which we know that V m is equal to this. So, we can put it over here. So, this will be V square by x sin delta multiplied by 1 upon V cos delta by 2. Now, we can write this uh, sin delta as 2 sin delta by 2 cos delta by 2 and this V and this V will be cancelled out. So, this will be 2 V sin delta by 2 cos delta by 2 okay, divided by x cos delta by 2 cos delta by 2 cos delta by 2 will be cancelled out. So, therefore, what we get I am magnitude as 2 V divided by x sin delta by 2 that is what the expression of uh, this midpoint current that we got. Okay. So, that uh, comes from this midpoint power flow expression. Now, once we get this expression, what we can do is that as I told you, if we put a midpoint series compensator at the midpoint of a transmission line, it will impact on this uh, series reactance. So, therefore, this I m will get change for the change of x. So, from this expression, we can write, we can write the change of del I m is equal to 2 V, 2 v this if I uh, differentiate with respect to x then, then this will be x square minus x square sin delta by 2 multiplied by del x. So, this is what we get. Okay. So, this is why this is what we get the unit change of this uh, this uh, midpoint current due to this unit change of this 
line reactance or X ok unit change of the line reactance ok. Now, if we have a series compensator over here then what would be the unit change of the series compensation uh, reactive power that the compensator will provide this is something you need to know. So, to do that what we will do is we will also find out the net change of this power and we also try to find out this net change of this series reactive compensation. So, now what we will write is so if we want to take del P m and with respect to del del x from this expression from this expression what we get this will be v square by x square there will be minus sin delta ok or we can write similar to this this expression that del p m is equal to minus v square by x square sin delta multiplied by del x ok. Okay. So, this is what we get. Now, uh, what we can uh, uh, understand that from this series compensation the unit change of series compensation can be written as del Q S E is equal to this i m square del x since uh, this it is having a negative change. So, we can also put a negative sign over here ok. So, that is what the thing and if we take a ratio of this del p m to del q s e that means this del p m to del q s e gives us the ratio of the unit change of active power flow due to the unit change of the uh, or the rather I should say that change of active power flow due to the unit change of the series compensation. So, this will can be obtained as minus v square divided by x square sin delta del x multiplied by 1 upon del q s e is this. So, minus i m square now I can write that this minus i m square is this uh, i m is equal to that. So, so, so i m square will be uh, minus 2 v by x square sin square delta by 2 then del, del x would be there. So, I will pu simply put this over here in the denominator. So, what I get is 2 v divided by x whole square sin square delta by 2 del x ok. So, this will be also negative. So, this negative this negative will be cancelled out ok. Now, if we just uh, simplify this expression what we get that v by x square and this v by x square will be cancelled out only 1 upon 4 will be left. Okay. Now, similarly this sin delta this del x del x will be cancelled out sin delta we can split it like 2 sin delta by 2 cos delta by 2 divided by this sin square delta. Now, this uh, sin square delta by 2 will cancel one uh, denominator sin delta by 2. So, what we will get uh, this 2 will be divided by 4. So, there will be 2 over here. So, this is 1 upon 2 tan delta by 2. So, this is what we got ok. So, this is what we got. So, this we can write as a change of this active power flow due to the unit change of the series compensation 
of a short symmetrical lossless transmission line ok and these equations will revisit again. So, this equation the importance of this equation will revis revisit again once I also discuss the uh, sand compensation ok. So, but one thing uh, should be clear to is that that we arrived at the expression of del p m to del q s u is equal to 1 upon tan 2 tan delta by 2 where uh, this this ratio that uh, del p m by del q s u uh, del q s e it is it represent the change of active power flow through the line with the unit change of the uh, series compensation and it is coming out to be a function of only this line load angle ok. So, if I write this in words then we can write that from this derivation that is del p m divided by del q s e is equal to 1 upon 2 tan delta by 2 that is. So, we get we get the ratio of change of active power flow power flow of a symmetrical lossless short transmission line line to the unit change of midpoint midpoint series compensation. So, that is that is our goal to find out. We are interested to find out the change of active power flow uh, change of or effect of active power flow for this midpoint compensation. Here we consider the series compensation at the midpoint and from that you can find out that we come out with the expression of this which uh, shows that when we have a, a unit change of this series compensation. Uh, there is a change in active power flow through the transmission line and that can be represented by this ratio del p m to del q s e and that is coming out to be a function of the line load angle that is delta ok. So, that is what our goal was. Now, next is we will also analyze the sand compensation. So, here also our network will remain same, we will consider a symmetrical symmetrical lossless short transmission line ok. So, here also we will consider this is a symmetrical lossless short transmission line. Now, let us draw the uh, circuit diagram for the sand compensation at the midpoint of a symmetrical lossless short transmission line model ok. So, so this is this will be something like that we have this is the th this is the line reactance up to this midpoint and this is the line reactance from the midpoint to the receiving end ok. So, this is the model of the short transmission line and here itself we have a series compensator sorry sand compensator here only we will have a sand compensator ok. Uh, now, suppose this voltage at this sending end side is V at an angle delta 
the voltage at the receiving end side is V at an angle 0. Since they are symmetrical line, we consider the voltage magnitude at the sending end and receiving end are similar or same. And uh, this is uh, this x by 2 and x by 2 are the line reactants which I already discussed in the last uh, slide that this x represents the line reactants. Now, we need to see that what would be the effect of this sun compensator placed at the midpoint uh, on the power flow through this line. Okay. So, that is what we, we are interested to find out. Okay. Now, voltage at this point is V m at an angle delta by 2 and as we know for uncompensated line for uncompensated line. we know the expression of V m is equal to V cos delta by 2. That is what we also obtained in the last slide that is this. We simply copied this thing. Now, the difference between a series compensation and sand compensation is that the presence of the series compensation uh, changes the line reactance. Okay? However, the presence of a sand compensation changes the voltage of the midpoint. Okay? So, the, the effect of the sand compensation is that it will definitely change the midpoint voltage and that is what we have understood in the last numerical problem that uh, you have seen without the sand compensation there was a uh, significant over voltage or under voltage. Uh, however, uh, the goal of uh, having a sand compensation at the midpoint was to mitigate this uh, over voltage and under voltage. So, of course, you should understand at this point that the presence of a sand compensation definitely changes the midpoint voltage. Okay? Now, let us draw the phasor diagram for this. So, suppose this is our receiving end voltage which is represented by V at an angle 0 this is what our sending end voltage which represents V at an angle delta and this is the angle delta. Okay? This is the angle delta. So, this is the difference of the sending end voltage and receiving end voltage is represented by this dotted line. Okay? Now, you know that this current which is flowing through this line without having a compensation that is I m and without this compensation this is also I m. Okay? So, without compensation or for uncompensated line the current also. So, I m represents I m represents the midpoint current midpoint current for uncompensated line, uncompensated line. Now, what do you mean by uncompensated line? When we do not have the sand compensation or any type of compensation of a transmission line, that is normally the uncompensated, uncompensated line. Okay? Now, when we have a compensated line, this I m will change and you have seen that we also derived that uh, this V m is having angle delta by 2 and as we know for symmetrical line I m is also having same phase with V m. So, I m magnitude is also determined over here uh, from this particular expression I m magnitude is also determined and angle also we know that it is delta by 2. So, we know that I m magnitude is 2 V divided by x. So, this is we already derived in the last page here. So, I m is equal to 2 V by x sin delta by 2. So, sin delta by 2 and it is if you consider this is a phasor then it will also having angle of delta by 2 similar to this V m. So, V m is also having uh, this magnitude at an angle delta by 2 and both I m and V m will be the same phase that is already established in my series of derivation in previous lectures. Right? 
Now, what we have to see is that what will be the effect of this shunt compensator. Now, this shunt compensator what actually it does is it, it draws certain amount of current. Let us consider that uh, this current is del I s h which is drawn by the shunt compensator through this midpoint. So, when it draws like this, so this, this current flowing through this your uh, left half of the shunt compensation and right half of the shunt compensation will get change. So, if this current is del I s h by 2, so if I apply a KCL at this point, so then this current will get change to uh, I m plus del I s h by 2, right. And this current will get change with I m minus del I s h by 2. So, that means the current current at the both sides of both sides are changed to change to this I m plus minus del I s h by 2, where del I s h represents the current drawn by shunt compensator. Okay. So, del S h represents the current drawn by the shunt compensator. So, that means, so without this uh, uh, presence of the shunt compensation, suppose the current which was also having a phase angle del by 2. So, this is del by 2. Suppose this is I s h, uh, sorry, this is I m. Then, this, this, uh, uh, this I m uh, will get change due to this uh, this this uh, current drawn by the shunt compensator at the midpoint okay so one half would be plus i m plus del i s h by 2 another half would be i m minus del i s h by 2 so once it is gets change once the currents gets change so v m will also gets change okay so we have to find out that how much change happens to the v m so, due to that, due to this, due to the change in current V m which is the midpoint voltage will also be changed to V m dash. Okay. So, once we, uh, Vm dash will get changed, we need to find out that what is the uh, magnitude of the Vm dash. To find out, so we, we can write the KVL e equation either in this particular loop or in this particular loop. Okay. So, in this particular loop, what would be the KVL equation? The KVL equation would be Vm dash is equal to this V at an angle 0. Okay p at an angle 0 multiplied by uh, this this multiplied by this current multiplied by this j x by 2. So, that vol voltage drop due to this current multiplied by this x 2. So, this is uh, v plus this i m minus del i s h by 2 multiplied by x by 2. Okay. So, if I sim simplify this, this will be v at an angle 0 plus i m multiplied by x by 2 minus del i s h multiplied by x divided by 4. Now, if you look at this expression v plus i m multiplied by x 2, this was our original Vm. 
So, therefore, this is what the change that will happen due to this del ish current. So, this change is can be represented by del V m. Okay. So, if we do not have this shunt compensator at the midpoint, this was our midpoint voltage expression that is V m. So, and this point is the change of the V m. So, we can write del V m magnitude is basically equal to del ish x divided by 4. Okay. All right. So, this is what the change of the midpoint voltage that we get from the uh, you know uh, the current drawn by the uh, sun compensator. Now, you know I will discuss in the future lecture also the sun compensator the effect of the sun compensator is that it, it will act as a uh, variable susceptance at the midpoint. So, I can represent this uh, ish del ish as uh, I can represent it this del ish as uh, this this is basically represented by this V m multiplied by del B s h where this del B s h is the change of susceptance tense of the shunt compensator. So, if we if we write so, then del Q S H which is the net change of the reactive power provided by the shunt compensator is can be represented as uh, V m multiplied by del I S H which is equal to V m square del B S H. Okay. So, that is what the that is what the expression that we get and this is basically representing the, the change of compensation compensation provided by the sun compensator. Okay. So, what we will uh, also see that uh, we, we also know that this change of the sun compensation reactive power will also impact in power flow. Now, the power flow expression for this equation will, will be at the midpoint power flow at the midpoint midpoint can be written as P is equal to V V m divided by x by 2 sin delta by 2. So, this expression we get you may also get from this uh, short line model. So, that this uh, z sin beta l by 2 can be approximated to x by 2 during uh, for this uh, short transmission line model. So, therefore, when there is a unit change in the midpoint voltage it will also impact this midpoint power. So, therefore, from this equation I can write del P m is equal to V del V m divided by x this 2 I am multiplying in the numerator sin delta by 2. So, this is the expression we get for this uh, change of the active power at the midpoint and that is uh, also the change of the active power throughout the line because we consider it is a lossless line. So, so that expression we get. Okay. Now, what we will do? We will take the ratio of these two. So, the ratio of ratio of change in change in power flow uh, change in time power flow to the change in sand compensation can be written as del P m divided by del Q S H. Now, I know the expression of del P m I will put it here del P m expression is already 
obtained from here let us put it there that is 2 V del V m 2 V del V m divided by x multiplied by sin delta by 2 and del Q S H. Uh, so, this is multiplied by this is multiplication sign do not uh, mix with x, x is our line reactance. So, this is multiplied by 1 upon V m square del V s h. So, 1 upon V m square del V s h right. Now, we know that V m is equal to V m also, uh, also we, we obtained that uh, the expression of uh, this V m also we obtained as this right uh, yeah so so what what we will put it over here is that this this is vm vm square del vsh that is del qsh and this is what del vm so what we will do is that we will put del del vm there so we will keep everything as it is only we will put del vm expression over there. So, sin delta by 2 multiplied by this del V m. Del V m we already obtained that del V m is equal to this del I s h multiplied by x divided by 4. This this is what the expression that we obtained and del s i, I s h is represented by this. So, so what we can write from this expression and this expression what we can write del V m is equal to del I s h which is equal to V m multiplied by del V s h okay, multiplied by x divided by 4. So, this expression I am going to write over here. So, so del V m is now uh, this V m V m multiplied by del V s h multiplied by x divided by 4. This is what the expression for del V m right. So, this is we all, all obtained in the last page. This is what uh, the expression is that I simply copied and put it over here and then we will have the expression of 1 upon V m square del V s h. Okay. So, now what we do is that now we will simplify this. Okay. So, to simplify this, this you know that uh, this V m and this square will cancel out del V del V s h del V s h will be cancelled out del this x and this x will be cancelled out. Okay. So, this 2 and this 4 if you cut there will be 2 here over then what we will get in the numerator that is V sin delta by 2 and the denominator we have 2 this V m will also have and that is all. Okay. Now, we know that V m is equal to V cos delta by 2. Okay. We will simply put it over here. So, this is this will be then uh, V uh, sin delta by 2 divided by 2 V cos delta by 2 which is where V V again will cancelled out. So, which can be written as 1 by 2 multiplied by 10 delta by 2 because sin delta by 2 and cos delta by 2 if you take the ratio this will be 10 delta by 2. So, what we get is P m divided by del Q s h this uh, ratio is coming out to be half 10 delta by 2. So, this is again you can see that this ratio gives the change of power flow due to the change of the sun compensation. Okay. So, sun compensation has an impact of uh, the change in power flow as well and this is what the expression that we receive. And that expression is applicable for any symmetrical short lossless transmission line. Now, what we will do with this expression? We may have a comparison with the series compensation 
to the shunt compensation okay so we may have a comparison so what type of comparison we can make so what we can do is that we can therefore compare compare the series and shunt compensation okay so therefore we can compare the series and shunt compensation so what uh, comparison we can do we can get the ratio of the uh, change in power flow due to the unit shunt compensation we can also get the change in the this power flow with respect to the series compensation so we will have these two and we will put it uh, side by side so this is one expression and that was another expression del pm divided by del qac which is coming out to be uh, 1 upon 1 upon 2 10 delta by 2 so this will this we get so where del qac represents the series change in series compensation del qsh represents the change in sun compensation both the change impacts on the power flow of the line that is visible that is understandable now if we take the if we compare these two compensation uh, just by taking a ratio of just by uh, uh, dividing thing this expression to that ratio okay so then what we will write is del pm del qsh multiplied by del qsc to del pm i am just inverting this i am taking reciprocal of that so this will be equal to half 10 delta by 2 multiplied by 2 10 delta by 2 so 2 2 will cancel out so it will be 10 square delta by 2 so which is a, again an important which is again an important relation which gives that for having the same change in the active power flow what is the ratio of the series compensation to shunt compensation is required so that is very important to understand so this this gives uh, to have to have same change in active power flow what is the ratio of ratio of series compensation because this is ultimately giving you the ratio of del qsc to del qsh the ratio of del qsc to del q s h so del q s u represents the unit uh, the change of the series compensation del q s h represents the change of the sand compensation so this uh, we, we can find out from this expression tan square delta by 2 now if we take a value of this uh, realistic value of the load angle that is suppose around 30 degree then what we will get this del q s c to del q s h is coming out to be 0 0.07 it means that to have uh, the same change in the active power flow the sun compensation rating requirement will be only 7 percent of the series compensation which is which is very important remark that you can find out this ratio gives that because this ratio is the uh, ratio of the rating requirement also for the series compensation 
as compared to the shunt compensation. So, when we have uh, delta is equal to 30 degree, this ratio gives a value that is 10 uh, 15 degree square which is coming out to be around 0 0.07. It means that only 7 percent rated uh, series compensator can impact the same amount of power flow which a shunt compensation can impact. Okay. So, this gives some sort of superiority, superiority of the series compensation, but of course, this rating requirement is one aspect and uh, uh, there are other aspects also. In general, this series compensator used to be uh, more than uh, more costlier at least twice as costlier as the sun compensator because of various reasons I will discuss in the my future lecture. But uh, one thing that you can find out for this theoretical uh, derivation that series compensation is more effective in terms of the control of the flow of the power through a particular transmission line and it requires very little change as compared to the shunt compensation to have a same change in the power flow of the line. Okay. So, this is, this is an important remark. So, this gives the uh, important remark is that we need only 7 percent rated series compensator compensator as compared to as compared to sand compensator. to have same change in power flow. So, in this uh, with this remark it may appear to you that series compensation is uh, more economic, but it is actually not because series compensation compensator uh, cost is much higher than the sand compensator and there are various other aspects. So, here we analyze the aspect of the compensation in view of only the change of active power flow through the line, but there are other aspects which are more uh, which are also more important in uh, uh, in terms of the power system uh, uh, point of view and those things I will discuss in, in my future lecture. But this, this lecture will give you an idea the relative performance of the series and sand compensator at the midpoint of a transmission line and also will give you the idea how they can effect on the power flow through the transmission line. Okay. So, this is what uh, our goal uh, of course, to, to discuss this particular lecture. And in next lecture, I will start with a specific type of sound compensator is called as static VAR compensator for this time view, uh, for this time being. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for joining. Mm -hmm.